All right, so here, uh, problem, first problem. A horizontal force of 280 newtons is exerted on a 2 kilogram discus. Discus is like the ancient Greek frisbee made of like a rock. You know, you shouldn't play that with your dog because they'll knock their teeth out. But this thing, they would actually, two kilograms is about like five pounds. So if you're going to throw this five pound disc, you know, you better be pretty strong. As it is rotated uniformly in a horizontal circle, which is about an arm, arm's length, right? A radius of one meter. Calculate the speed of the discus. So the discus thrower like, would actually rotate their whole body, okay, with their arms stretched out, okay, so... Let's see how that would look like if we were to draw a little free body diagram on it. So here, um, here's the discus, right? Now, it is rotated about a central axis and the radius of the discus that's being rotated around happens to be one meter okay so this thing is being rotated around like so okay and the force that is rotating this thing right is 280 newtons. Now the 280 newtons of force is actually going in towards the center of the rotational axis, okay? This force is literally the tension of the arm of the discus thrower, okay? So this force is the tension that's created by the discus thrower's arm, okay? Now, obviously, there are other forces, such as, like, FG, but this FG really will not be um, hindering or uh, helping the rotational motion. This horizontal force is the only force that's actually um, helping the rotation, okay? Therefore... If we were to look at all the forces in horizontal direction, so some of all forces in the x direction is basically what's going in a circular motion, so it is MAC. Okay? There's only one force that is actually... There's only one force that's going in the horizontal direction, and that is the horizontal force of F. Now, since the direction of F is in same direction as my AC, okay, same direction as my AC, the direction of AC should always be positive, okay? So... The direction of A sub C should always be positive. So if any forces acting in the same direction as my AC will also be positive. So here, then if I set these two equal to each other, MAC is equal to F. Right? However, MAC is equal to, since I'm going to give directions now, F is in the same direction as my AC, so it is positive. So we know M. AC is V squared over R is equal to F. Now, if I were to solve for V, my V then is equal to F times R over M square root of.
Now let's plug in some values. So square root of okay, f is 280. r happens to be just 1. Okay. m is, God bless you, 2 kilograms. Okay, so I guess we didn't have to write that in kilograms. But. So if you work that out, what do we get? So 280, so square root of 280, let's divide by 2, right? I get 11.8 meters per second. So that's the speed of the discus going in a circular motion. Next, a flat puck of mass big M, capital M, right here, right? So this here is my big M. Is rotated in a circle on a frictionless air hockey table and is held in this orbit by light cord which is connected to a dangling mass of mass m so what does that mean when this thing is going in a circle it's this small mass right the weight of this is keeping this mass flying off in the tangential direction does that make sense okay so if this thing is going in a circle, and if I get a scissors and just cut this off, then this will fly off in a tangent, right? Or if it's here, it's going to go, right? Here, it's going to fly off tangent. So what's keeping this thing from flying off tangent is this weight of this that's keeping it from flying off. Okay, so if I were to do a free body diagram of this and this separately, okay, well, let's do this one. Here, if I were to look at just this free body by diagram of this, what do I have? Well, here's my disc, capital M. And I will have three forces acting on this. And those three forces are, right, I have FG, right, FG, which is basically MG. And then I have F normal. Now, these two will pretty much cancel each other out, so I'm not going to worry too much about it. Okay. And they're not really helping or hindering this puck from going in a circular motion. There is one force that's going this way towards the center of the circle, and that is the tension that's causing this to fly off, uh, causing this from flying off, right, from the circular motion. So this Tension is causing the circular motion. So if I do sum of all forces in the x direction, that is equal to m a c, because that's what's causing it to go in a circular motion. Okay. Then, if I take a look at all the forces in the x direction, I only see one, and that is the tension. Tension is the only force in the x direction or horizontal direction. Now, if I set these two equal to each other, I have MAC is equal to tension. Now, let's give directions. AC is going in this direction to the right, and tension is also going into the same direction to the right. 
So they're going to both be positives. So MAC is equal to tension in this case. They're both positives. So M, right, V squared. I'm sorry, I should make this capital M. So sorry, sorry, sorry. Capital M, capital M. So there are two M's here. One is capital M and the other one is a small lowercase m. But this one is a capital M. Alright. So mv squared over r is equal to my tension. Now, let's take a look at this. Free body diagram of this. Here, I have my small m just hanging around. Right? And this has two forces. One is the tension, and the other is Fg, which is equal to Mg. This thing is not accelerating up or down. The standing is pretty much hanging there stationary. Therefore, sum of all forces in the y direction for this one, I guess, is equal to m a y. And sum of all forces in the y direction for this one is, I have two forces. I have tension force and I have fg force. Now I set them equal to each other. m a y is equal to tension plus fg. Now let's give directions. My acceleration in the y direction is zero. There's no real, it's not going to be accelerating up or it's not going to be falling down. It's going to just hang in the hang there. I'm just going to call tension positive, up positive in this case. So tension is positive, that means my Fg has to be negative. So my tension is equal to Fg. That means my tension is equal to small m times g. So I should substitute this into my, this tension here. So what do I have? I have mv squared over r is equal to mg. So if I solve for v now, my v is equal to right, mg times r over the big M, whole thing, square root of, voila. Okay? Is that good with everybody? Alrighty, alrighty. Alright, any questions? Moving on. All right, next. I have a 0.4 kilogram ball attached to the end of the horizontal cord is rotated in a circle of radius 1.3 meters on a frictionless horizontal surface. If the cord will break when the tension in it exceeds 60 newtons, what is the maximum speed the ball can have? Right. How would you answer be affected if there were friction? Well, we'll talk about that second part later. But for now, we know right, a 0.4 kilogram ball is attached to a cord horizontally, right? So here's, here's the ball, right? And it's attached to a cord, right? So here. And this thing is going in a circle, right? So horizontal circle, so it's going to go like this.
Okay. Now, what's keeping this ball in a circular motion is the tension. Okay, it's the tension that is keeping it in a circular path. So here is the tension. Now this radius is equal to 1.3 meters. So this ball is traveling horizontally in a circular motion. So the direction of acceleration is in towards the center of the circle, which is the same direction as the tension. Right? Now, tension cannot go beyond 60. So we'll set the tension equal to 60 newtons. So that's the breaking point. Okay? So when it reaches 60 newtons, it's going to snap. So now that we know this, of course, there's going to be like normal force and FG, but we're not going to worry about that in this case. Okay. All right. Now what? Well, let's do some uh, sum of all forces. In the X direction is equal to M A C because is going in a circular motion. All right, now how many forces are in the horizontal direction? In our case, there's only one force, and that's the tension. It's the only force. So if I set them equal to each other, my MAC and my tension are in the same direction, so they're both positives. I'm going to skip that step and go that way. All right. So here, my AC is V squared over R. So here, what's going to happen? If I solve for V, my V now is equal to tension times R over M square root of Okay. So if you plug and chug square root of tension, which is 60, R, which is 1.3, over M, 0 0.4. So what's my V? My V comes out to 13.96 or 13 meters per second. Now, how would your answer be affected if there were friction? Well, which way would friction act if it was rolling around here? Right? Well, in this case, the friction would actually act in towards the center of the circle as well, along with the tension. Okay, friction would actually help go in the circular motion. So, in that case, okay, you add friction to this. Okay? When you add friction to this, you could actually have, you know, I guess more velocity, higher velocity, you could go faster. Because right? let's just say if you have like 20 newtons of friction, instead of 60, you have 60 plus 20 on this side, right? Because friction is actually going to be pointing in towards the center as well. It's going to help go in a circle. So for part B, if, if friction uh, uh, is present, right, then speed can increase. Okay. 
ਕਰਕੇ ਇੱਕ ਅਜਿਹੀ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਆਕਰ ਰਾਈਟ ਡਾਊਨ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਆਰ ਫੋਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਕਟਸ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਟੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਪਲੱਸ ਫਿਕਸ਼ਨ ਸਮ ਆਫ ਆਰ ਫੋਰਸ ਐਂਡ ਐਕਟਸ ਉਹ ਵੀ ਜਸਟ ਲਾਈਕ ਮੈਸ so n v square over r is equal to tension plus friction so friction would actually be a going in this in towards a circle we'll learn about this a little more soon when we talk about cars going in a circular motion okay all right this one is important vertical motions are very tough why because it has gravity and gravity will play depending on where you are in a circular motion you would either hinder the circular motion or you would help circular motion or it will be neutral to circular motion okay so when you are at the top of the circle your fg will always be down so fg and force tension will both be pointing in the same direction as my ac so my in this case at top of the circle my gravity will help circular motion okay so Because gravity will actually assist and it will actually help go in a circular motion because Fg will be pointing in towards the center of the circle. However, at the bottom, the gravity will hinder, right? At the bottom. okay it will hinder circular motion because it's pointing away from the ac at these locations at these locations fg is still down so gravity is neutral right so gravity is neutral so it doesn't help or hinder at those places okay so let's take a look at what happens at the top of a circle so here we have a ball on the end of a string is cleverly cleverly revolved in a uniform rate in a vertical circle of radius 85 cm or simply 0.85 meters and that's very important that you convert that into the correct units right so this is r and r is 0.85 meters okay so don't forget that as shown in figure 5-33 if its speed v right so this is v and that's same speed whether it's here 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 
right? So it has to be cleverly rotated to be consistently 4.15 meters per second because gravity will always make it go faster on the way down, but you have to do it cleverly. Right? And the mass of the ball is 0.3 kilograms. So calculate the tension in the string when the ball is, A, at the top of the path. So here, let's take a look at when the ball is at the top of the path. So tall. Right, tall. So at the top, we have sum of all forces. Now looking at the y direction, because horizontal direction, there's nothing going on. We're looking at just the y part. That is equal to MAC because we're moving in a vertical circle, right? Now, sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to, I have two forces. I have Fg and I have F tension 1, right? Or F tension top, right? So I have F tension top plus F G. So if I set them equal to each other, M A C is equal to right F top F tension top plus F G. Now let's give directions. A C is always going to be positive. So M A C right, is equal to F tension top is pointing down, which is the same direction as my A C. Therefore, that's positive. FG is also pointing down, which is same direction as my AC. That's also then positive. Okay, therefore, here, if I solve for F tension top, I have to bring this FG to the other side, and FG is nothing more than just MG. So in this positive FG becomes negative FG on this side. So MAC minus MG is equal to F tension top. So here, my mass, which is, well, we know AC is V square over R. Now it's plug and chug time, right? So let's plug and chug. So here my mass is 0 0.300 times V, which is 4.15 squared. Divide that by 0 0.85 minus 0 0.300 times 9.8 is equal to my F tension top. This, I believe it comes out to 6.079 minus this is 2.94. Now, I, why am I doing this? So you, we're going to use these values later. So my F tension top comes out to 3.14 newtons at the top of the circle. Okay. Now let's take a look at the bottom. Bottom. That sounds so lovely. Bottom. All right, here we go. Now if we take a look at the bottom, I can do the same sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to MAC. But my AC is now in this direction. That's my AC direction. And and so is, you know, this is, we know is AC direction is this way, right? So here, now up direction is positive and down direction is negative. Here, down direction was positive and up direction was negative. Okay, so maybe we should write that down. So this is positive, and this is positive. 
So how many forces do we have? We have two forces, right? We have F tension bottom, right? Plus FG. So here, MAC is equal to F tension bottom plus FG. Now, MAC is positive. F tension bottom is positive minus FG. So if I bring this negative FG to the other side, it becomes positive. So MAC now becomes plus MG is equal to F tension bottom. We already know what this is, right? We just figured it out. MV squared over R plus MG. And if you plug in the values, we should get 0 0.300 0 .00 times 4.15 squared over 0 0.85 plus 0 0.300 0 .00 times 9.8 is equal to F tension bottom. This is 6.079. Plus, this is 2.94, and that is by F tension bottom. So if I add these two, now it becomes 9.02 newtons. And that makes perfect sense. Why? Well, if you ever are on a Ferris wheel that goes around, you would weigh more at the bottom of the Ferris wheel because the normal force is pushing your bottom up. Where at the top of the Ferris wheel, you're going to feel less weight. You're going to feel less weight at the top. You're going to feel more at the bottom. So instead of a tension here, imagine there's a seat that's, you know, holding you down, the normal force, basically, right? So the normal force is what the scale measures. And basically, that's exactly what you feel this way. So you know the loop-to-loop -loop roller coasters? When you're sitting down, the chairs, the seat is upside down. So normal force is pushing you into the, right, into the, center of the circle. So the bathroom scale measures the normal force. At the bottom, normal force pushes you up. So you will feel more weight at the bottom than at the top. Matter of fact, if you go slow, your normal force can go to zero. Yeah, you'll feel weightlessness. You'll feel like you're hanging if you go at the perfectly right speed. But if you go slower than that, you'll fall off the track. And you'll just go, mm. So you, you have to go at minimum speed where your F normal goes to zero. So we'll talk about that probably on your mock quiz. All right. All right. Next. I know you guys didn't probably do. Do you guys do this problem, these problems? No? Oh, yeah. These two are actually pretty good problems. Well, all right, we'll, we'll, we'll just move on. Because if I ask you guys to do it, you guys will probably sit around. So you guys are going to wait for me. Anyway, right? Most likely, that's what's going to happen. If I say, oh, are you going to do it? I'll give you 10 minutes. You guys won't do it. So I'm just going to do it. All right, here we go. A device for training astronauts and a jet fighter pilots is designed to rotate the trainee in a, a horizontal circle radius, uh, I guess, 10 meters. If the force felt by the trainee 
is 7.75 times her own weight. So do you know what that means? That means the acceleration this pilot feels is 7.75 Gs. That's what that means. 7.75 times her own weight means the acceleration is 7.75 Gs. All right? And that's a very important thing to know. So here, that is right, 7.75 times 9.8 meters per second squared. Okay, so like, what is that value? Let's figure it out. So here, 7.75 times 9.8. It's like 75.95 meters per second squared. Where's my A sub C? Okay. So how fast is she rotating? Express both in meters per second and revolutions per second. Okay. So we know. So here is like the arm. And then there's a seat here. And the pilot is in the seat, right, strapped in, right, and it's being rotated around, right, it's rotated around, like so, okay. So the acceleration right, is going to be felt when she's rotated at very high rate of speed. So we know a sub c is equal to v squared over r. The acceleration she feels is 7.75 g's or 75.95 meters per second squared. Right, is equal to v squared over 10 meters. So v is equal to square root of right, 759.5. So v is equal to, so what is that, John? That's 27.6 meters per second, right? So how many revolutions per second is that? Well, how do we calculate revolutions per second? Well, let's do it. Logically, we know one revolution is equal to 2 pi r, which is 2 pi times 10. Right? We know v is equal to 2 pi r over the period, right? So can we figure out the period? Oh, actually, we want to figure out the frequency, sorry. Or 2 pi r f is what we're 
So these, these are the same things. So frequency is what we're trying to find. So frequency is equal to V over 2 pi R. Okay? So now we can just plug and chug. So here we have 27.6 over uh, 20 pi. So divide that by, now make sure you put this 20 pi in parentheses or else what you're going to have is you're going to have 27.6 divide by 20 multiply by pi, okay? So be careful with that. So you really should have that, the parentheses, right? So we should have 0.44 revolutions per second to see how fast it's turning. If you don't do it correctly, you're going to get like this, ready? 27.56 divide by 20 times pi. And you know you're going to get something like that, which is completely wrong. Okay? That's really, that doesn't feel like it's that fast. Like, you're not even, like, turning half the revolution in a, in, a, in a second. But it's fast. I'll show you a video later about the G-lock. Because it's nuts. Okay. All right. Next. How many revolutions per minute? would a 15-meter diameter Ferris wheel need to make for a passenger to feel weightlessness at the topmost point of the trip? Oh, boy. Okay. So what's happening at the top of the Ferris wheel? Well, something is actually making this person, occupants inside a top of the ferris wheel stay in, all right, or else they're going to just fly off, okay, so most likely to have these like little handlebars that comes down to your lap, right, to hold you inside in place, right, so the only force that's actually going to keep the occupants inside that ferris wheel at the top of the uh, thing is just their weight. Screaming, they're screaming, ah, right, right. So let's say only force that's keeping them on inside is their weight. So the weight is the only force they have. Okay. So if there are no other like straps tied to keep them in, right? There's no tension. Of putting them down or there's nothing except just the weight is the only force that's going to keep them from flying out we could say sum of all forces is equal to m a c again the y direction again this direction is the positive direction because that's the a c direction right this is the a c direction Right? That's the AC direction. So here, sum of all forces in the Y direction, there's only one force, and that's FG. And since FG and AC are in the same direction, they're both positive. So here, MAC is equal to FG. MV squared over R is equal to MG. <laughs> Look what happens to the mass of the occupant. That's why everybody will feel the same exhilaration, whether you are a lineman, an NFL football team, or five-year-old kid, right, who goes in there. They will both feel the exact same exhilaration, all right? So the speed they have to run this thing is at square root of RG, okay? So what's the speed? It has to be R, which is 15 meters 
times 9.8. So what is 14 times 9.8? And then we'll just go root that. And the speed of that Ferris wheel at the top of the circle should be Oops, square root it, and that is 12.12 meters per second is how fast it should be moving. Okay. This is slightly different than the roller coaster. The roller coaster, the person will be upside down. And the normal force is pushing that person down. Right? But the normal force is going to be zero. Same thing, but it's going to be upside down. So only force that's keeping the person in the roller coaster in a circular path is, again, it's just FG. So it's the exact same thing, except there's nothing. All right. All right. Any other questions? Any questions? Are we okay? All right. All right. Good. Moving on. Okay. In a rotor ride, or what I call it, the hell hole. Yeah. At a carnival, right? People pay money to be rotated in a vertical, cylindrically walled room, right? If the room radius is five meters and the rotational frequency is 0.5 revolutions per second, when the floor drops out, what is the minimum coefficient of static friction so that people will not slip down? go to hell. Right? People describe this ride by saying they were being pressed against a wall. Is that true? We'll talk about that. We will talk about that. Is there really an outward force pressing them against the wall? I think we should already know the answer to that, but we'll talk about that again. If not, right, description of the situation besides being scared. So first thing they should, they should do is draw a free body diagram. Right? Let's draw a free body diagram. So here we have a hell hole. So we have a cylindrical room. And it's like being in one of those like top load washing machines, basically, in a spin cycle. That's what it is, right? So don't put yourself in here. Put your friend in here first, okay? So you put your friend who you don't like in here, right? In here. And spin your friend around in a very high rate of speed. All right. Well, the speed is this. Okay. So what is that, John? The, that's frequency, right? This is frequency right here. That's my F. So we know V is equal to 2 pi R F. And the radius happens to be 5 meters. So what's the speed of this? Well, we have 2 times pi times r, which is 5. Frequency, 0 0.5 revolutions right, per second. And this is in meters. So revolution just 
you know, it goes away, basically. And 2 pi basically has that revolutions already in it. So what's my V? So my V is equal to right, uh, 5 pi. Should we just leave it as 5 pi? Um, right? 2 times 0.5 times 5 is equal to 5, so 5 pi meters per second. Let's figure out what that is, actually, in digits, so we can all be consistent. So that's about 15.7 meters per second. Okay, that's what it is. That's speed. Now, let's take a look at what's going on. If we look at the vertical forces, right, if we look at the vertical forces, I have right, friction that's holding your friend up. Friction. And the weight of your friend will always try to pull down towards hell. So friction is what's keeping your friend from going from hell. Then, what's keeping your friend from flying off tangentially? It's the wall. Your friend wants to fly off tangentially, but the wall's saying, no, you're not. No, you're not. It's keep pushing. The walls keep pushing your friend in towards the center. The wall pushing your friend is known as the normal force. That's the normal force towards the center. Okay. So, what's the normal force? Sum of all forces in the x direction, there's only one force in the x direction, and that is the normal force, and that's what's making it go in a circle. So, sum of all forces in the x direction is MAC. There's only one force in the x direction, and that is equal to F normal. AC and normal force are going in the same direction. Therefore, they're both positive. So MAC is equal to F normal. And since AC is equal to V square over R, right? Now, here's a problem. We don't know what the mass of your friend is. So we'll just leave it as M. Right? We'll just leave it as M. So M times V squared, which is 15.7 squared over R, which is 5, is equal to F normal. So what is your F normal? I have F normal is equal to 49.35 M. This M is not meters. This is me this is mass, okay? So maybe I should do that. So we can we know that this is not meters. Now let's take a look at the vertical direction. Well, sum of all forces in y direction is equal to MAY. But your friend is not going to be pulled up to heaven or will not be sliding to hell. So the acceleration in y direction is zero. Right? So sum of all forces in y, there are two forces. There are F fric there's F friction, right? And then there's FG. I'm going to just say going up is positive, all right? I mean, going to heaven is always positive than going to hell. Going to hell is negative, definitely. All right? So here, I'm going to say 0 is equal to F friction, positive, minus FG. 
FG, we know it as MG. So if we bring this to the other side, I get positive, right? FG is equal to a friction. Well, FG is just M times G. Friction, mu times F normal. We know what the F normal is, right? We, we already figured it out. So we can substitute that F normal in here. Then we have MG is equal to mu times 49.35 times m. <laughs> Look what happens to your friend's mass. Gets canceled out. So it doesn't matter. So if we solve for mu, my mu now is equal to g over 49.35. We know what g is. That's 9.8. So my mu, static, comes out to... I get something like 0 0.199. And what's the unit for mu? Good, like you said, nothing. Nothing. That is correct. There's no unit for mu. All right, no unit for mu. So, What's going on? Well, we figured out the minimum coefficient of static friction has to be this. That's why the ride operator will tell you to wear a shirt going inside this ride. Because, you know, if you go in there with just like a bathing suit or like guys will go in there like, you know, without a shirt, they have like this coconut oil dripping down on them and like suntan lotion and that would reduce the friction and they would slide to hell you know but if you have at least a shirt on it will give you more friction so it'll prevent you from sliding right now obviously they're going to try to like turn it a little bit faster than this just so they could actually keep people from going to hell you know so static friction is definitely needed now, people describe this ride by saying they were pressed against the wall. Now, so I told you to put your friend in this ride. But now, let's put you in this ride. Now, you are the one being spun around. What happens? Well, if you are the one being spun around, what happens is you'll scream loud, right? But, but your body actually wants to go tangentially from the circular path, right? But what's happening is the wall is preventing you from going into circular path, and the wall is pushing you in towards the center. So what your body is feeling is the wall pressing you, but because of you are being felt to that, it feels like you're being pushed into the wall, really. This is that reaction force. Wall pushing you, you push wall. It's the third equal and opposite action-reaction pair. So when you are being spun around, right, in a circular path, you actually do feel you're being pressed against the wall. And that is absolutely correct, because that force is the reaction force of the normal force the wall's pushing on you. Okay? So, for observer... 
being spun around. The reaction force of the wall pushing on you so when I say the observer this is you right is felt by the observer So it is definitely real for you, but it's not for the third party. When you're observing your friend being spun around, there's only one force, and that's the normal force. That's it. But if you, the observer, is being spun around, that force is definitely real, right? It's the, this, this is the F normal, and this is the reaction force of F normal prime. Reaction force of F normal prime right, is definitely real. All right. So, is there really an outward force pressing on them against the wall? Well, for your friend, when you're observing your friend, no, there is not. But if you are being spun around, then yes. Okay? So I hope that description is understood. Okay? All right, any questions? Times it over. Let's just get this one done. It's just this page, one more page. All right. Conical printing. Um, I'm not gonna like go too crazy on this, but it's a good concept to know. All right. You have to learn how to break up this force tension into its components of force tension X and force tension Y. Okay. So this is a very important concept. Okay. So here we have a conical pendulum, and this is like a tether ball. Remember, like in grade school, we had like a pole with, a, and then you're trying to like smack your friend on the other side of the pole, you know, in the back of the head. And you throw it around, it goes around in a circle, and you miss it. It's gonna go in a circle, in a cone-shaped form, right? Well, there's definitely tension that's causing this ball from flying off, right? This tension. Can be broken up into tension y and tension x. All right. The tension y is the vertical, and tension x is the horizontal. Okay. So if we were to take a look at vertical, 
sum of all forces in the y direction is equal to m a y. But this thing is not accelerating in up or it's not accelerating down. Right? So a y is zero. And sum of all forces in y, there are two forces, and that is F tension y, right? and there's Fg. So 0 is equal to, I'm going to consider up positive, right? so F tension y minus Fg. So F tension y is equal to mg. But what is F tension Y? If we were to look at this and redraw this, let's, let's redraw this. Here's the F tension, right? Here is F tension X, and here's the F tension Y. Now this angle theta right here is given here. All right, so assuming this angle theta is not going to change, we can figure out the F tension Y is the adjacent, or this is the cosine. So F tension times cosine of theta is what F tension Y is. And F tension X is F tension sine theta. So don't forget, this is theta is up there. If the theta is here, then this is F tension sine and this is F tension cosine. But because the theta is up there, we have to switch that around. So here, my F tension Y is F tension times cosine theta, which is equal to mg. Well, how do I calculate my F tension then? My F tension is equal to mg over cosine theta. That's one way of solving F tension. Or another way would be sum of all forces in the x is equal to mac. Right? And then sum of all forces in the x is equal to there's only one force in the x, and that is F tension x. That's what's making it go around in a circular path. And they are in the same direction to each other. Therefore, MAC is equal to F tension x. OK, so MV squared over R is equal to F tension. What's F tension? F tension x is F tension sine theta. So if you want to solve how fast this thing is going to go, let's say, right, then mv squared over r is equal to, we said f tension was mg over cosine theta, right? So we can say mg over cosine theta times sine theta. Well, first, look at this. Masses cancel out. And my V squared over R is equal to G sine theta over cosine theta. Hmm, does that look familiar? What's that? This is tan theta. So if we solve for V, my V is equal to the square root of R G tan theta. All right. And we already found the tension, but this is just one one step further up. That's all it is. Okay. I'll stop my lecture here for today, and I want to show you this little video clip that's kind of fun for that. You know, the pilots and astronauts, right, going through that G-lock? Well, here we go.